My name is John Dawson and I'm doing a series of videos on intaglio etching techniques. Uh, this will be the um, second video in the series and we're going to continue with uh, uh, various methods of applying uh, soft ground. As I mentioned in the uh, beginning of the first video, uh, this is not uh, a video about beginning printmaking. I'm uh, assuming that uh, anyone who's interested in these uh, videos already has at least some basic experience with various uh, etching techniques, uh, soft ground, hard ground, aquatint, and so forth. Uh, and this is not really a, a video that's going to concentrate on what's considered to be uh, non-toxic techniques. We'll uh, have a, a number of methods that are considered non-toxic, but uh, it's not the focus of, uh, of these videos. Uh, my intention with this is to present uh, a whole variety of different methods of doing these uh, various techniques and uh, then the um, individual artists can uh, decide for themselves which uh, of these things uh, are most applicable to your particular situation. So uh, we'll go on now to uh, finishing up on various methods to do uh, soft ground. Well, this is another possibility uh, for soft ground. It's very simple. It's 50% asphaltum and 50% uh, paint thinner. Um, if all you're going to do with uh, soft ground is uh, press a uh, fabric into it or, or uh, doilies or whatever to uh, transfer that pattern or texture to your plate, uh, this works just fine. This works real well. And when you mix it up, it's just going to be a kind of a thick sort of uh, mixture like this. And um, <clears throat> it's simple to apply. You just uh, roll it out onto uh, your plate and it's ready to use. The one advantage to it is um, you don't have to put it on a hot plate at all. The disadvantage is, is that it's really not apropos to try to transfer a drawing to it and probably tried to work into it um, uh, directly on the plate necessarily because it's just a little too soft. But it works very well for uh, transferring uh, patterns or fabric or whatever to your plate. And we'll do a little uh, short demo of how that works. Okay, first you're going to spread some of that soft ground mixture out on a glass palette and then uh, uh, begin to roll up uh, the plate with it. Um, at some point, I, uh, I switch rollers to a small clean roller, which uh, I uh, run over the plate numerous times to uh, get it not necessarily thin exactly, but uh, smooth and uh, once again, it usually has kind of a, a honey colored look uh, when it's about right and uh, very n nice and smooth. Now I'm just going to um, add a little pieces of tarlington to this. I'm going to put those uh, pretty much all the way down the plate. Once I have it, these covered with the uh, tarlington the way I wanted them, uh, I'm going to cover this with a piece of paper. Uh, you want to use something fairly heavy. You don't want to use newsprint or, or something light. You want to have something fairly heavy. And then um, I'm going to run it through the press and these are uh, the pr resulting print. First it's the uh, print called Bandage Man and then a detail of the print to give you an idea of exactly how this works. Well the next uh, soft ground method we're going to uh, deal with is uh, BIG. Uh, BIG stands for Bigelow and Talio Ground and uh, it comes in um, in two different kinds, red and black. I've rolled out the red. Um, and you apply it pretty much the same. You did, we showed in the last uh, segment. You just um, uh, put some out on a glass palette, roll it out on the glass palette, and then roll it onto the plate. Now, uh, in uh, Searching around the internet, I happened to find a site, I think it's called Zia Maze Printmaking, that did a, a number of different um, 
research tests on using um, big in different ways, but uh, uh, and one of them uh, primarily was um, soft ground. And the, um, the, the test that they did that I thought turned out the best was once the uh, ground is uh, rolled out, you put it on a hot plate for um, uh, about five minutes at 150 degrees, which is uh, about 65 degrees Celsius. And, um, and then uh, use it as a soft, soft ground. I was concerned that it would turn the, uh, the uh, ground into a hard ground, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But I guess it's just not hot enough or long enough to do that. Uh, you don't really have to do that to use it as a soft ground. Um, and if you're going to just uh, press things into the ground, uh, like uh, a lot of people do just for soft, soft ground, um, it works just fine for that. Uh, I've done that a number of times with BIG, and, uh, and it seemed to work uh, pretty well just to press things in it without doing the hot plate at all. And, um, and if you don't have a hot plate, you can work on it directly uh, just as a soft ground without doing that. But it does seem to work a little better, I think, if you do uh, like their research test did. Okay, we're going to try uh, transferring a, uh, a drawing. I'm going to use this, uh, this original drawing. And um, there are two, uh, two ways you can do that. Uh, if the drawing is dark enough or you have a, um, a uh, light box, uh, this is drafting paper, and I like using the drafting paper a little better because um, it's heavier and the tracing paper sometimes has a tendency to um, uh, tear. And uh, what you want to do is you want to do the tracing uh, with something uh, dark like a, a felt tip, tip pen, a, maybe a charcoal, heavy charcoal pencil, or uh, Sharpie, because you're going to put it face down, and you're going to need to see um, the other, the back side of it uh, through the paper, and then um, uh, retrace the lines uh, when it's face down on the plate. You're going to do that so it'll be backwards. So when you print it, it's going to turn out like the drawing. And of course, the other thing you could do is you could pre-draw the back side again uh, before you start. Um, with a pencil and then go over those lines. And then, um, <clears throat> this is tracing paper. You can see it's uh, much easier to see through. And this also works, but as I said, there's a tendency for it to sometimes to, um, to tear if you're doing a, a very extensive uh, drawing or transfer uh, the drawing. Now to do that, um, I have three different things here that work well. Uh, this is a, a hard uh, pencil. It's a 6H, a 5H pencil. Be good. Uh, this is a, a regular ballpoint pen, the old-fashioned <coughs> ballpoint pens that are actual ballpoint pens that, uh, you know, a hard uh, surface, not like a pilot pen that, um, that uh, doesn't really have a ballpoint in it. And then um, sometimes I've used these um, bamboo uh, pens, and they, they work real, real well, too. So um, we'll give that a try. I'm using the drawing that's on the drafting paper. I'm going to tape it down with a few pieces of tape. And then uh, you're going to need to make a, a bridge. Uh, this bridge is made from uh, a couple of pieces of um, doorstop. Uh, you have to have a bridge to rest your hand on. If you press down on the paper with your hand, it's going to pick up um, a lot of the ground and create a false bite. I'm using the ballpoint pen, and the advantage to that is if you use uh, some other color than black, uh, like uh, blue or red or whatever, then um, you won't get it uh, confused with areas that you've already drawn on there and uh, and this parts of the drawing that you'd like to have transferred to the plate. 
Well, I'll remove uh, the drawing, and um, uh, it's hard to see in the video, but uh, you can barely see the uh, the drawing that's uh, uh, on the plate now. It's not really deep enough to uh, to etch, and you really need to go back over that with uh, something else. I use this uh, bamboo pen to uh, go over those lines a second time uh, to make sure that they're um, deep enough uh, through the the ground to uh, to the plate so that uh, you can etch them. You can see that a lot of the ground has been picked up uh, on the uh, back of the drawing from the plate. Those large dark spots uh, uh, are likely to be uh, create false bites and what you really should have is a uh, magnifying glass and then uh, you can inspect the plate for areas where the uh, the ground has gotten too thin and might actually um, show through the plate. Now um, you can continue to uh, work on the uh, the plate um, with uh, a pen or pencil or whatever uh, or you can um, just put the plate in the asset uh, as it is and uh, and etch it the way um, you have it uh, drawn out. One of the unique properties of BIG is that um, you can turn the uh, the soft ground into a hard ground. <clears throat> now the um, the tubes of BIG come with uh, some uh, uh, a sheet of instructions which has some rather complicated uh, ways to uh, to do that. Um, I, I pretty much just ignore it. Uh, there are th about three different ways that I know of uh, to uh, to change the, the soft ground into a hard ground. Uh, the first one <clears throat> is you can uh, put the uh, the plate into an oven at about 275 degrees, that would be about 135 degrees Celsius for around six minutes. Um, but, you know, who has an oven in their studio? Uh, you could always, I guess, put it in your kitchen oven. Um, the other way is to uh, put it on a hot plate, and in that case you'd set the temperature to about uh, 225 degrees or so, maybe even 250, which would be about 107 degrees to uh, about 120 degrees for um, about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, uh, you don't want to leave it on too long and you don't want to bake it on there. Um, so <clears throat> what I usually do is uh, after about 10 or 12 minutes, I take the plate off, let it cool, um, see if it's tacky. If it's still a little sticky or it comes off on your finger, then I put it back on the, to the hot plate for a few more minutes. And until uh, when it cools, it's no longer uh, tacky. Um, and then the final thing that you can do is uh, do nothing. You can just leave the plate and it'll turn into a hard ground all by itself. Now, I usually just leave it overnight. Uh, however, living in the uh, desert southwest where the climate is very dry, um, it may dry uh, faster here than it would be uh, in, a, um, in a more humid um, climate. So, um, if you just leave it alone, it'll eventually uh, dry by itself, usually, I think, overnight or maybe a little longer. So um, we'll go on to uh, turning this into a hard ground and then uh, demonstrating a few things that you can do at that point. One of the things that you can do with uh, big as a hard ground is you can draw directly on the plate. <clears throat> Instead of transferring an, an already existing drawing, you could draw uh, something freehand uh, right directly on the plate. And then uh, after it's done, you can scratch through that with your etching needle and then uh, put it in the acid to, uh, to uh, etch. Um, I'm using the, uh, the red uh, big. I think it would probably uh, show up a little better in the red, but maybe the black would work as well. So uh, I have some different materials here we're going to give a try and see uh, uh, what things work. I tried various materials to draw directly on the plate. 
Uh, the first was uh, lead pencils. Uh, uh, I tried a, a ebony pencil and the uh, softest uh, drawing pencil, a 6B pencil. Um, it didn't work very well, and besides that, they tended to scratch through the surface of the um, of the ground, which uh, you probably wouldn't want to do until you're ready to actually uh, finish the drawing and know exactly what it is you wanted to uh, have etch. I also tried a Sharpie, and uh, I was amazed that that didn't work at all. Um, the um, China markers, the black ones, didn't work very well. Uh, what did work real well, uh, this is a litho pencil. It's a number one litho pencil. And um, you can see uh, it works real well. This is a number two litho pencil. And it works pretty well, too. But once you get to a number three, uh, four, and five, uh, the harder the um, litho pencils get, the less well they work. The five didn't work at all. Neither did the four, really. This is a white china marker, and <clears throat> it actually works pretty well. You can really see uh, the line with that. And then uh, this is a gray crepa, and uh, it works uh, real nice also. So uh, any one of those uh, four materials uh, work pretty well to um, draw directly onto the plate. Um, and then you could scratch through that and, uh, and etch the plate. Uh, if you don't like the drawing you've done or you want to change something, um, a little bit of uh, paint thinner on a paper towel and it'll just uh, pretty much wipe uh, right off. So um, that's, uh, that's all you need to know in order to draw directly on a uh, hard ground with big. Well, I think that uh, pretty much uh, covers it as far as using um, big for a soft ground or a hard ground. There are a couple of things that I think are a little problematic. Um, the first is uh, I've had a little bit more of a problem with false biting using big as a soft ground. Soft ground in general uh, is a little bit more susceptible to false biting anyway. Uh, I think uh, the problem I've had with it actually is a result of, um, of a less experience. I've used a traditional soft grounds uh, dozens of times and um, big uh, a lot less. And I think uh, the reason I had some problem with uh, uh, false biting was um, uh, just not uh, getting the uh, plate covered with uh, big properly. Now, uh, the point is that you really have to cover the plate properly or you might have problems with um, uh, soft biting, false biting. Um, covering the plate properly really just is a, a function of experience. Uh, you just have to do it and, um, and after a while you'll, uh, you should know or I would hopefully one would know when it is uh, covered the, uh, the best. The other problem is um, cleaning the plate. If you're going to use a uh, big just as uh, a soft ground and uh, not turn it into a hard ground, it, turn, it cleans up just fine with uh, paint thinner. Everything comes off just perfectly. If you turn it into a hard ground, it's much harder to get off. Now, the uh, one thing that's um, uh, recommended is uh, Brasso. Uh, I don't like using it. Um, first of all, Brasso has a very strong ammonia smell, which I don't like. And secondly, I don't think it worked very well. The other thing that uh, works better and you'd probably have to get in order to get the plates clean properly is a um, some kind of a non-toxic uh, paint remover. And uh, you apply the paint remover, and usually it's best to let it sit a few minutes, five minutes or so, and then um, you clean it off. And I use, uh, this is called a doobie. It's really a, uh, a nonstick cookware uh, sponge for cleaning, um, you know, nonstick cookware. And you, 
Here in the U.S., you can get it in almost uh, any um, grocery store. But I suppose any uh, nonstick cookware uh, sponge-like thing would, would help. Then uh, once you get the, um, the ground loose, you have to pretty much rinse it off with water. Wipe it off, and then I uh, use the the um, the uh, uh, paint remover leaves a residue on the plate, and then I uh, use uh, uh, dish soap and water to finally clean the plate off. So that's a lot harder to clean than the uh, other uh, versions of soft ground or hard ground. Well, uh, a few final observations about using soft ground. <clears throat> um, I don't usually like to give too much advice about uh, time uh, the plate should be in the acid because there's just too many variables. But um, generally speaking, uh, soft ground needs to be in the acid uh, a little longer than other grounds, particularly hard ground, which uh, can be something of a problem because um, uh, soft ground in general is more susceptible to uh, false biting than than some other grounds and um, which means if it's in the acid and in the acid longer you could get some pretty serious uh, uh, false bites. Um, just recently uh, I had a plate that I was working on. I've been um, doing uh, uh, etchings and talio etchings for almost 20 years now and I applied the soft ground, uh, put it in the acid, and I got uh, false bites all over the top of the plate. And I guess that was really from uh, just overconfidence or um, complacency on my part. So <clears throat> this can be a, a, a significant problem. So when you apply the soft ground, one of the things that can be very helpful is uh, get a, uh, a magnifying glass and Try and inspect the plate uh, to see if there's any areas where the soft ground is, uh, or the plate is showing through the soft ground. You're going to be sure to get um, false bites in those areas. And then the other thing is, which is what uh, I did wrong, is I had the soft ground on <clears throat> just way too thin. So those are some of the things you really should be aware of in, uh, in using soft ground. The other thing is, is that uh, it's often recommended to, uh, to use a designated uh, brayer or roller for soft ground. You use the same one all the, ever, all the time. Um, I did that for a while. It didn't seem to make a big difference to me, but um, it, it could be something that would be a valuable thing for other printmakers or something you should uh, at least consider in doing uh, soft ground if you're going to do it on a pretty regular uh, a regular basis. Well, that's it for this one. Uh, I'll be having uh, other uh, videos coming up uh, about the um, etching and talio process. And uh, I'm going to follow this up with a few examples of uh, etching uh, prints of mine and the uh, web address for my website and uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to other videos of mine on uh, YouTube.